Hackers and welcome to another Plexus Hub Tech video. You'll have to excuse my voice today, it's a bit croaky, um, so I do apologise for that first of all. Um, this is a first of many to come, um, videos that kind of highlight some um, interesting topics about tech, um, programming, um, interesting programs that are out and about um, on the internet, etc, 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 and cool things that you can do with your computer. You know, this is a tech channel aimed at kind of the um, OS level of things. Now today, we're just going to be quickly exiting Steam <laughs> and talking about some SSH tools that you can use in Windows. Now, if you didn't know what SSH is, it's a secure way that you can use to connect to servers at remote locations. So, <clears throat> in Windows, obviously, we have CMD. That's kind of like, you know, you can use Telnet to connect to stuff and um, that's cool and everything, but SSH is a bit more secure and it's uh, something that came from Linux. Um, so obviously with Windows, uh, we can't just use Telnet, it's um, a bit crap and outdated, so we use SSH now. Um, so these are some of the clients that you can kind of use to um, connect to an SSH client. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is Putty. Putty's uh, one of my favorites. It's literally uh, super, super simple. Um, client terminal setup, you know, it's basically really, really, really fancy. Um, and it comes as a portable uh, program, which is really, really nice in case you don't want to install it locally and you can just run it on the go. Um, the next one I really like <coughs> is a program called Kitty. <laughs> now, this was actually forked from Putty back in the day. Um, and it's only designed for Windows. Um, unlike Putty, Putty comes on a few uh, platforms, whereas Kitty is just just for Windows. Um, you're getting some features like session filters, automatic logons, um, automatic password commands, um, etc., etc., etc. Um, do all sorts of stuff. So. There's uh, Kitty, which is another one. We also have, if we uh, go back to Google's, we can see Bitwise, which is my next favorite one. It's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. Um, so Bitwise is a bit more advanced. I mean, it comes with SFTP as well. Um, it's fully graphical, um, you get some crazy, crazy, crazy features, um, some of which even I don't know what they do, um, so I'm, I'm going to like just move away from there for now. Um, but this is also, I'm pretty sure a Windows only one, I mean it's built on .NET, so you can't really run .NET programs on Linux, so you're kind of screwed there. And the last one I really like is XShell. Um, Dun, 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 um, this does actually cost money. Um, I can't remember how much it is though. Dun, 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 dun. But there is a free version. It really depends on what your use is. But I think it's a few dollars. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's like ninety dollars for the actual product itself which is amazing um, but yeah you get some really cool things you get SSH1, SSH2, SFTP that comes with Telnet as well remote login um, <coughs> you get tabbed environment in that dynamic port forwarding custom key mapping um, visual basic scripting uh, da, 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 da. lots and lots and lots of different things and there are also kind of products available um, for instance like Fire SSH uh, which is a add-on for Firefox that you can use, which is pretty, pretty, pretty good um, for connecting. I actually quite like this one uh, because it comes with syntax highlighting, which makes it a bit easier on the eyes. Anyone who programs will know it's like some SSH <laughs> clients are like, I don't know, reading Notepad, which is it's not something you really want. But anyway. Um, these are some of the SSH clients that I like to use and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Thanks for watching.